Hello everybody, my name is Seabro, and I am here to bring you another Zelda Theory. Today, I will be talking about the Spirit of the Hero's Master Sword and the Fierce Deity's Double Helix Sword, and I will be giving a slight comparison between the two swords. The first subject that I want to touch on is the Master Sword. As we all know, the Master Sword is the sword that is wielded by Hylia's chosen hero, Link. It is a weapon that can only be used by the Spirit of the Hero. It is incredibly powerful, it can transcend time, and most importantly, it has the power to seal and repel evil. Even though it is a two-handed longsword, Link is able to wield it with just one hand because of his demigod-like strength. And because of his physical prowess, Link can wield the sword three different ways. He can use his signature one-handed style, freeing up his other hand for other stuff. Two-handed style for a balance of strength and defense, or a style called Rikasso for a mostly offensive form of combat. However, Link is never credited wielding the sword in this third style so far. Let's dive further into these thoughts by finding the origins of the sword. The Master Sword was given to the original Link by Hylia before he went to fight Demise. When she bestowed the blade upon him, she commented saying that the blade was, quote, created by the gods meant for our use alone. She then said, in order to exert its power on the surface world, it must be reforged by human hands. Link then took the sword, broke it down, and reforged it into the shape that we all know today. It was during this process that the Master Sword changed. The sword went from being a pure blade that is only wielded by the gods, to being sullied by human hands thus becoming incomplete from its original form. This could even cause the sword to become weaker from its original state. In fact, I feel that losing the Master Sword's true power was the price Hylia was willing to pay in order for the sword to be used against Demise. Now, because the Master Sword was an incomplete blade, it would suffer from a fatal flaw, degrading. What I mean by this is that over time, the Master Sword actually starts to lose the power that has been bestowed upon it until it reaches some form of a base state. My reasoning for this is that the next time the Master Sword is seen is not till thousands of years later when the Skyward Sword Link took hold of it. The majority of Link's time spent on the surface is restoring the Master Sword to its original state, starting from the Goddess Sword to the Goddess Long Sword to the Goddess White Sword to the incomplete Master Sword, and finally, to the true Master Sword. This is my evidence that the Master Sword suffers from degrading. This could also explain how Ganondorf in Wind Waker was able to weaken the Master Sword. He could have used his magic and taken advantage of the Master Sword's sealed state to degrade it. I also feel that Hylia knew that this was the price that would be paid in order for the sword to be used. However, Reforging the sword by human hands was not all bad. The sword also changed in another manner. Yes, it may suffer from degrading, but it also has unlimited potential. By that, it can be enhanced to take on any foe that it may need to slay. This is made apparent in both A Link to the Past and A Link Between Worlds, when the blacksmiths temper the blade, and when the Great Fairy bestows her power on it and it becomes the gold sword. This is also made apparent in Twilight Princess, when the blade is given the ability to slay the twilight. Before I talk about Fierce Daddy's Double Helix Sword, I need to build my case. To start off, let me compare the other three spirit masks, that is the Deku, Goron, and Zoro masks, with the Fierce Daddy's mask. As we all know, each of the first three masks are the embodiment of a soul, and as I stated in my last video, the Fierce Daddy mask has the spirit of the Fierce Daddy God. We also know that Link brings two key traits to each of the three forms. These traits are an appearance trait and a magic ability trait. Each of the forms are fairly plain looking in comparison to their living counterparts, and not only that, but all of them wear some of Link's garments. I am referring to the three first masks and not the Fierce Dides mask. So this covers the appearance trait. As for the magic trait, well, let's start from the first mask. Deku Scrubs are known for being able to shoot Deku Nuts. However, Link shoots bubbles of magic which appear to be way more effective than the Nuts. 
No other Deku scrub seems to possess this ability. This also falls in line with the Goron. When Link's Goron begins to roll at full speed, magic spikes protrude from his body to inflict damage upon his opponents and surroundings. No other Goron seems to possess this ability either. As like this, with the Gorzoro Mask, when Link is swimming, he can emit a magic field around himself to protect himself and to inflict damage. And as like the others, no other Zoro appears to possess this ability. Now that I've established this, Let's look at Fierce Deity. As I stated in my last video, Fierce Deity is Terminus Hero Spirit, and this is why he looks and sounds like Link. So when Link puts on the Fierce Deity mask, the form of Fierce Deity that he takes is the actual form of the Fierce Deity God. This brings us to the Double Helix Sword. The Double Helix Sword is a massive, two-handed, demonic sword that has a very innate ability to easily emit long-ranged magic slashes. It is two helixes that are wound together, one being a shade of blue, the other being a shade of green. These two colors are the key to the double helix sword. Like the other three masks, this sword is the embodiment of Link and Fierce Deity together. Just like how the sword is almost shaped like a strand of DNA, because they both are hero spirits, they are actually wound together. This is supported by the colors of the sword. In most cultures around the world, shades of blue is often affiliated as a sign of power and in some cases chilling power. And I don't mean temperature, just frighteningly strong, ridiculous power. Green is often affiliated as a sign of immaturity. So in this case, blue would represent Fierce Deity and green would represent Link. This is further supported by the colors of their tunics. I also feel this is true because of the fact that the double helix sword can emit magic, just as all the other three masks could emit magic in a form of an attack. So what I mean by all of this is that the double helix sword is itself a weapon that was created from the merging of Lynx and the fierce deity god's hero spirits. It's time to put the swords against one another. The master sword is a sword that over time will weaken but has unlimited potential and can repel evil. The Double Helix Sword is an absurdly powerful demonic weapon. Each has their pros and cons, but as to which one is better, that is a very difficult question. The only way how I can break this down is to compare two different opponents, Demise and the Majora's Mask. When Link fought against Demise, Link was using the true Master Sword and was fighting a fully powered up Demise. Link did win the fight, but it was a struggle. When Link fought the Majora's Mask as Fierce Deity, he absolutely demolished him. Now for some logistics. The Master Sword has the ability to repel evil, which would have given Link an upper hand against Demise. Whereas with the fight as Fierce Deity, the Fierce Deity is a demonic god and the Majora's Mask was the embodiment of the demonic Majora Dragon, so Fierce Deity did not have any form of an upper hand in that fight. This further supports how much stronger Fierce Deity was than the Majora's Mask. However, as the Majora's Mask stated, he needed a host, which means that when Link fought the Majora's Mask as Fierce Deity, he did not fight the full power of the Majora Dragon. So, with these kinds of logistics, I feel that at normal state, the Double Helix Sword is actually stronger than the Master Sword. However, because of the Master Sword's ability to repel evil, if the swords were to clash, that ability would bridge the gap of their power. Not to mention, the Master Sword does have the ability to surpass the Double Helix Sword with its unlimited potential. Well, thank you so much for watching, and as I say, be proud to be a Zelda fan.